Today in the news, the worst website for tech still exists and Intel leaks show a thing. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with userbenchmark.com. In their ongoing war with anyone who has a brain and can read numbers, the absolutely awful benchmarking website has posted their opinions on the unreleased Rocket Lake S Core i7-11700K. And once again, their zippers are down and their bias is showing. While we have no problem with their claims that early samples indicate a 19% IPC gain, there is really nothing to indicate that their second statement is true, which is that Rocket Lake's IPC uplift translates directly to around a 10% faster effective speed than both Intel's last gen and AMD's 5000 series. I mean, what? Maybe they were talking about Intel's storage controller or PCIe controller, why am I even trying to explain their statement? Look, while Rocket Lake being faster than Comet Lake does make logical sense, the claim that Rocket Lake is overall 10% better than the Ryzen 5000 series doesn't seem accurate at all, unless you're cherry picking your data which is exactly what they did. I mean, linking to their website has been literally banned on the r slash hardware, r slash AMD, and even r slash Intel subreddits. Seriously, banned. Like, look at this, for example. Even when their own benchmarking numbers show a Ryzen 5 3600 beating Intel's Core i5-10600 across the board, they still gave the Intel chip a higher rating, just for the hell of it. It makes no sense. In their most recent statement, once they left this fantasy land of performance, things just got weirder and more angry. Look at this, for example. Despite Intel's performance lead, wow, AMD will likely continue to outsell Intel thanks to AMD's marketing, which has progressively improved since the initial launch of Ryzen in 2017. They even went after us consumers, saying that we're spreading misinformation like Intel's new chip use too much electricity. Well, I guess they're right. 290 watt at PL2 is very little for an eight core CPU. It's like a small home heater. I mean, if we look at the competition, it's not like AMD can keep a 16 core CPU below 200 watts, even with precision boost overdrive enabled. Oh wait, they can. And they of course went for the reviewers saying that they use a mind numbing list of scientific and rendering benchmarks to highlight obscure and irrelevant performance characteristics. You mean games? Specific scenes, detailed software slash hardware settings, and choices of competing hardware are cherry picked, undisclosed, and inconsistent from one review to the next. Seriously, the simple fact that user benchmark exists is hurting consumers at this point. They should just be shut down because if someone's looking for a comparisons of a CPU to another CPU, or even a GPU to another GPU, the website often comes up in the first few results. And if you don't know that they're a dumpster fire, you might believe what you see. So please spread awareness. Moving on, let's talk Intel. Ah, Intel. For the last couple of weeks, the Rocket Lake S, actually a couple of months, the Rocket Lake S lineup has been leaking like a sieve. But there are still things we don't know, like the actual clocks and which one will have TVB and stuff like that. Well, now we have them, at least for the 11900 series and 11700 series, because yes, now we have to call them series since there are five variants for each. The clock speeds are a little bit lower than Comet Lake, but of course that doesn't really matter since Intel is really counting on the IPC uplift to defeat AMD. So we know that the 8-core 11900K is the top of the line, their flagship. And personally, I thought that Intel would, uh, you know, be smart and market it against A5800X, you know, another 8-core. And if Intel did that, they would kill it. But no, obviously, this is Intel we're talking about, so they're still trying to go after the 5900X. They're probably doing that to try and justify a rumored price of $600 US. Also, let's have some fun real quick, and uh, let's predict how Intel is going to market this one real quick. Oh, I even have a prop, hold on. Hi, I'm Intel. Look at my 8-core, defeating a 12-core CPU at gaming, specifically at 1080p on eSports title. And, uh, Look how much better it is for you, the creators, specifically for software that we spent millions of dollars optimizing for, like the Adobe Suite. Oh, and we have the fastest PCIe Gen 4 transfer speeds, but only on the CPU lane. The chipset is still Gen 3, so don't try any funny business. And of course, lastly, we decided to do you guys a solid and let you overclock your memory on P560 and H570. I mean, it's not like we took it away last gen so we could bring it back this gen and say that it's a new feature. Anyways, any questions? 
it's pretty cool, right? It's just a 9900K S box and a, a blue light that I borrowed from uh, Hardware Canucks. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video on the Intel box to subscribe. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.